morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your latest forecast update for Saturday the 22nd of March 2025. Starting us off today with showers and thunderstorms dominating the scene over in the Northern Territory, extending towards South Australia and western parts of Queensland as well, all driven by a boatload of moisture across interior parts of the Northern Territory. It's almost like a developing tropical Oz getting its act together through there. Uh, plenty of showers and thunderstorms, that, like I've said, moving in towards western Queensland as well and they're expected to continue throughout the remainder of this week. In the last 24 hours we've had over 100 170,000 lightning strikes within 800 kilometres of Renmark in South Australia. So that's just including South Australia, parts of uh, Southern Northern Territory and in towards parts of South Western Queensland as well, and also through New South Wales and Victoria. So it gives you an idea of the magnitude of the stormy weather that's extending across interior parts of the nation, and that is expected to continue over the next couple of days as well. Here's a look at the forecast modelling, and you can see just showers and thunderstorms dominating the Northern Territory throughout the remainder of this weekend, extending in towards Western uh, Queensland throughout uh, tomorrow, and in towards early next week as well with an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity through Monday and Tuesday. Heavy falls expected around the Mount Isa area and especially towards the immediate east of Mount Isa through Cloncurry and Julia Creek right through Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. The rainfall will ease off a little bit through Thursday and Friday but you can see still plenty of rainfall expected in the vicinity of Mount Isa and we're actually going to see a tightening of a low pressure system developing north of Mount Isa as well. That's got a bit of model support at this time and that is the precursor to the rainfall which I'll talk to about in just a few moments that's going to materialise across far north Queensland and into North Queensland. The rainfall is expected to be very heavy and like I said rainfall accumulations will be intense at times. We're expecting rainfall accumulations throughout the remainder of this weekend to be anywhere between 0 out to about 100 millimetres across western Queensland. The heaviest falls will be down around the Birdsville area into the southwest corner of Queensland. We're expecting heavy falls across the eastern half of the Northern Territory as well. Tennant Creek could see up to 100 millimetres with isolated falls up to 200 millimetres possible closer to the border. We are talking about very remote parts of interior Australia at this point so the rainfall isn't too much of a concern to too many people but if we do get significant flooding in these areas through here we could be seeing some damage to the road network connecting the northern territory to queensland and if we do see road closures well that would be a disaster because people would have to seek an alternative route that will likely mean a detour of about 36 hours of extra driving so the rainfall through here even though it's not expected to be too widespread and too problematic in terms of rainfall it could end up being very problematic indeed accumulations will then begin to build through monday right out towards wednesday and thursday across interior parts of western queensland you can see peak accumulations on this forecast modelling here up to around 500 millimetres and widespread falls between 2 and 300 millimetres are possible out through McKinley, Winton, Longreach down towards Yarraka and Windora. The heaviest falls will be in this vicinity through here just towards the southeast of Mount Isa with very heavy falls expected around the Winton area with the potential for up to like I said 500 millimetres in those areas. Widespread falls between 150 out to 350 millimetres possible around Mount Isa. Rainfall will ease off as you get further towards the west of Mount Isa but very heavy falls streaming in from the Gulf of Carpentaria and we're expecting some very significant rainfall accumulations through the Richmond River and some of the other major rivers in these areas through here. The Lychard River through here flowing out of Mount Isa and then across towards Gregory. I believe these rivers through here, the Gregory River, some very significant rainfall accumulations are expected into the Gregory River as well. So these catchments are going to be flowing, that's for sure. Some very significant falls can be expected as a result. And then later on into the forecast period, you can see this rainfall dragging over in towards North Queensland with heavy falls expected from about Wednesday onwards into North Queensland with the rainfall really picking up around the Mackay area through Wednesday and Thursday and we could be seeing 24 hourly accumulations for days on end up anywhere between that 40 to 120 millimetre mark with isolated falls over a three day period it could be as high as up to 4 or 500 millimetres around the Mackay area. There is still a few discrepancies between the forecast models. We're not 100% sure if the heaviest falls are going to be around the Mackay area or if they're going to be further north of Mackay up around the Whitsundays or if they're going to be significantly further north up around the Cardwell and the Ingham area. There's a range of possibilities now with the forecast modelling. I am personally expecting the rainfall to be at its heaviest between Mackay around the Townsville and up to around the Townsville area, with heavy showers expected around the Proserpine and the Mackay area, and also isolated periods of heavy rainfall starting from Friday around the Townsville and the Cardwell area, and especially through next weekend when the rainfall will be at its heaviest for these locations through here. Again, like I said, there's still some major discrepancies between the forecast models. It really does depend if we see tropical low activity, which is a possibility at this time. You can see the East Rebirth actually calling for a low pressure spin up offshore from the uh, North Queensland coastline here, just north of Yapoon and Rockhampton. Expecting a tropical low to spin up in proper fashion is what the GFS is saying here, and you can see from about Friday onwards, we're expecting a low pressure system to really begin developing over in the Gulf of Carpentaria from about the 28th or the 29th of uh, March, and then through uh, the rainfall really being dragged down the Queensland coastline through far north Queensland's dangerous rainforest on sun uh, Saturday, and then in towards the Casper Coast on Saturday night into Sunday morning, with very heavy falls expected through this tropical low's development around the Townsville area through 
Sunday, persisting through Sunday and in towards Monday. And when I say very heavy force, I'm meaning some pretty widespread, very significant rainfall accumulations up around that 40 to 50 millimeter an hour mark. So again, the rainfall accumulations, there are a very wide scope of possibilities at this point for North Queensland. And that's why I'm not going too far into detail right now. If we do see a proper tropical low spin up, we're going to be seeing some very widespread and some very significant uh, rainfall uh, accumulations. And this tropical low will be heading pretty much parallel to the Queensland coastline as well. So no location is going to miss out. If we don't see a low pressure system uh, spin up and we're relying on rainfall to be developing along trough lines, we'll be seeing multiple convergent zones develop at multiple times during the day. And that's going to bring some isolated but very heavy to locally intense rainfall accumulations to some locations. And that's the stuff where we've seen over the last couple of weeks, four or 500 millimeters just being dropped in a night around the Cardwell area because they sit under a convergent zone and we get those southerly winds meeting with those nor'easters and we get just rainfall upon rainfall upon rainfall upon rainfall and it just hammers those river levels up and just creates major flooding right through North Queensland. So if there are, like I've said, for the nth time so far this video, multiple uh, possibilities at this time and a lot, of, a lot of discrepancies between the forecast modelling. So again, I'm not going to be making any calls right now on what we're expecting. In fact, it's going to take into about mid next week to know exactly what we're expecting up here. But I reckon for people between Cookdown down to Rockhampton, so including Mackay, especially around the Mackay area, actually, because that's where the heaviest rainfall is actually most likely through this time. Proserpine, Bowen, Air, Airlie Beach, Townsville, Cardwell, Halifax, Ingham through the Casper Coast, so Tully and Innisfail as well, and then up to Cairns, we're expecting some very significant rainfall accumulations as a possibility on the forecast, starting from the 27th of March, especially through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday, the 31st of March, and then easing off through the first couple of days of April. Rainfall accumulations, the numbers right now are actually start, starting to become a little bit of a concern, and you can see through that time period that I've just named here throughout a week-long period, starting on the 26th of March out to about the 1st of April, you can see widespread falls above 150 millimetres here with isolated falls as high as 4 or 500 millimetres now developing on the forecast here around the Mackay area. So like I said, Mackay likely to pick up the majority of the rainfall here and the forecast models are in great congruency with that with the heaviest falls actually concentrated around the Mackay and Townsville area or between Mackay and Townsville. The GFS is painting a pretty concerning picture right now with that tropical low forecast. So if we do see a tropical low actually materialise on the forecast modelling, we could be seeing some very significant rainfall accumulations. And like I said, whilst that's not overly likely at this time, it is still a possibility and certainly a reasonable concern that we need to be looking at in great detail over the next couple of days. The Axis forecast model is just not quite on board with it yet. Uh, the Axis is calling for the heaviest falls to be a, a trough associated and convergent zone associated, which means that the rainfall numbers are likely to be much heavier than what they're painting right now in the forecast models. But regardless of that, the heaviest falls are not really materialising on the Axis ra uh, rainfall forecast here. And when they do, they're really a lot further north than what the other forecast models are saying. So what we're looking for is just congruency between major forecast models and you can see the GFS and the Eastern Blue Earth. Whilst there are some major discrepancies through the next couple of uh, uh, days and out towards the next two weeks, they are starting to paint a pretty accurate picture or a pretty congruent picture between both of them. And that's when we start to be able, when we will be able to start making some proper forecasts, including some numbers and what we can expect impacts wise for North Queensland. So I'm sorry to disappoint for people up in far North Queensland. I'm not going to be able to tell you for the next couple of days exactly how much rainfall is expected, when it's going to arrive, and what the impacts are going to be. But I can guarantee you by around Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll have those numbers in and I'll have a reasonable forecast for you. One thing's for sure, rainfall will be coming through in the form of heavy showers and storms and we can't be riding out heavy some, uh, some heavy rainfall here and there starting from Sunday and especially through Monday and Tuesday and residual shower stuff is expected to continue across the Sundays as well. You can see some showers and storms moving through those areas right now throughout the remainder of this morning and we've also got some pretty strong wind gusts associated with those showers as well. Peak winds averaging uh, 20 to 30 kilometers an hour with gusts up around the 50 to 60 kilometer an hour mark. So again, it is rather unpleasant. You can see these wind observations out to sea here, uh, into some of the Coral Sea atolls. A little bit uh, gone, a little bit haywire here on this ship with 183 kilometres an hour. I reckon they've taken the ship's carter and just blasted it through the weather, uh, the uh, wind observations through there. That is obviously a bogus reading. So again interesting stuff on the forecast modeling, interesting stuff on the satellite picture as well. And up in far north Queensland, it's certainly now time to begin thinking about a bit of a rainfall event that is in the making now up there. So certainly some heavy rainfall is a possibility at this time. And yeah, just look at how much moisture is over the interior parts of the Northern Territory in South Australia. I just want to talk about this for a few moments. It is very significant stuff. It happens a couple of times a year, but it is the first return to the proper rainfall that we're seeing up in the monsoon of the Northern Territory. They have had a historically dry wet season, that's for sure. In stark contrast to Queensland's wet season, the Northern Territory has had 20 to 30 percent of its average wet season rainfall, which is nothing. And considering that they rely on their wet season rainfall more so than WA or the Queensland areas do, uh, this rainfall here has been 
been important and it just hasn't shown up for them. So it is very good news indeed that we've seen some of this rainfall develop for them. It is very important that this rainfall continues for them and this amount of moisture here is certainly a blessing, not a curse for the Northern Territory, that's for sure. Even though some flooding is expected as a result of this rainfall, it is certainly more good news than it is bad news for the NT. And just how much rainfall has far North Queensland had? Well, 3,933 millimetres of rain so far this calendar year, not this wet season, this calendar year, just 2025 at Paluma Dam. The average annual accumulations there, I believe, are around 2,700 millimetres, so we're already eclipsing that by uh, 1,200 millimetres, which is a very significant margin. And the all-time wettest, it's not 6,000, it's not 5,000, it's 4,600 millimetres as their all-time record. So not only is Paluma Dam going to eclipse their all-time record of rainfall in a calendar year, they are going to absolutely steamroll it. They're going to knock it out of the park and they are going to bulldoze that previous record. And I reckon that they are on track for around 5,500 or 6,000 millimetres of rainfall this calendar year. Keep in mind, we still have wet season 25, 26 to go, and that will add a couple of thousand millimetres to the gauge, most likely through November and into December of this year. And we've also still got this rainfall event coming that could drop anywhere between 500 to 1,000 millimetres there. And more rainfall is going to fall into the first couple of weeks of April as well. And rainfall doesn't pipe down for far north Queensland until about late May, early June. So plenty of rainfall up in far north Queensland so far this calendar year, and it's showing on the satellite imagery. You can see the Burdekin River clearly traced out here. There's so much water moving through the Burdekin River that the satellite is actually able to pick it up and you can see it as a very faint kind of hairline fracture here on the Australian map. Some very significant rainfall has been feeding the Burdekin River and minor flooding is ongoing at the Air and Home Hill flood measuring station there. Anyways, over to the west right now where we've got Tropical O25U fighting desperately for life towards the south of the Cocos Keeling Islands. This system here looking pretty raggedy this morning. It's really not looking healthy at all. It has tried to blow itself up overnight, but it's really looking quite disappointing. And I think for it to become a tropical cyclone right now, it would need an absolute miracle. So I don't really think the next name on the Australian naming list, Tropical Cyclone Courtney, is going to be assigned to this system here. It's looking very, very disappointing and very much worse for wear this morning, unfortunately, for this system here because it did actually have at one point a good chance of developing into a tropical cyclone and it was actually kind of hopeful for this system at one point but it's really wasted all of its time out in the favorable conditions well offshore from the Pilbara coastline. Unfortunately the one that looks to be the most significant is going to be one closest to the West Australian coastline. It's funny how that always works out but take a look at the wind forecast right now pulling it back to the 22nd of March today. You can see a bit of a low pressure system now beginning to develop here south of Indonesia in fact about halfway between Java and the Pilbara coastline. This system here is going to slow organize itself through this week and it's certainly no rush that's for sure and slowly get its act together into the early parts of next week and you can see as I push this for, uh, forecast forward here it only begins to start moving and properly developing come around Monday night into towards Tuesday morning it's likely to attain full tropical low status by around Tuesday or Wednesday and then full tropical cyclone status will likely follow a couple of days behind that and it looks like as per this forecast solution here it is going to keep its distance from the Pilbara coastline however this is just one forecast solution out of many and whilst the icon forecast model generally speaking, not a very reliable forecast model is following on board with the Eastman Web forecast solution here. The GFS and the Axis both have very different solutions from this storm. So you can see the GFS calling for it to develop here and swing uh, very much further out to see than what the Eastman Web is calling for. And we might actually see another tropical low develop in its wake here over the Kimberley region, which I actually think is probably the most likely situation that this forecast is going to take. And that system that we were calling for the Pilbara coastline to not just impact it, but slide slowly past the Pilbara coastline might not actually come out of this tropical low that's slowly festering now south of Java. It might come from a brand new system that's expected to develop around the Kimberley region. And I would also like to add that that's got a bit of model support now from the access forecast model, I believe. You can see the access calling for this tropical low to begin developing quite quickly through Monday and Tuesday. No, it hasn't actually. I completely made that up. Uh, that was on the forecast model from the access yesterday. But it gives you a bit of an idea that we are that there are a lot of range, a lot of possibilities here with this tropical cyclone forecast. I think the most likely one is that this tropical low slowly gets its act together over the next couple of days and then swings down, missing the West Australian coastline by a pretty big margin. It's probably going to remain about four or 500 kilometres offshore at a closest approach, and it's also not expected to be a strong tropical cyclone at that. It's most likely to make its closest approach sometime on Tuesday night uh, through to about Thursday morning. Rainfall and storms are kind of the only threat, and there isn't actually going to be an awful lot of that rainfall and storms either. So again, in terms of preparations, you really don't need to be making any. And I think that goes without saying now with the forecast now completely back down from these tropical 
cyclones having a potential impact around the Exmouth and the Karatha area. That's no longer expected on the forecast models at this point. It's the GFS that brings these storms at a closest approach. Well, it actually brings the storm after it at a close approach here. And I think considering the fact that this doesn't really have any model support, you can see between major forecast models, it's all saying radio silence as we get out towards the later parts of next week offshore from the Pilbara coastline. I think the GFS might just be spinning something up for the sake of spinning something up, which is no stranger to the GFS forecast model. It does that quite a lot. So impacts and the necessary to know for the West Australian coastline, nothing is going to happen through there between Carnarvon out to about Port Hedland. The chances of a full-blown tropical cyclone impact are pretty much zero at this point. Showers and thunderstorms possible on Tuesday night and Wednesday night as well. We could be seeing rainfall accumulations anywhere between zero out to about 30 millimetres along the coastline. But in terms of wind speeds and thunderstorms, that's going to be a really negligible impact. The strongest wind gusts will probably only be approaching about that 50 or 60 kilometre an hour mark if they materialise at all. So it's not going to feel like a tropical cyclone. It will certainly feel like one is developing offshore. And I think the most significant impact from this tropical cyclone is going to be that west coast trough that it begins to build throughout the rem remainder of this weekend and into early next week as well. It is going to be a scorcher down in the southwest of Western Australia. You can see temperatures beginning to develop there as the west coast trough begins to really build. And you can see very warm temperatures expected through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and out towards Thursday, the 27th of March as well. Unseasonably warm where we will be tickling high 30s for the remainder of next working week. And the temperatures only beginning to cool down as we get out to about Friday or Saturday, still into the mid 30s through Friday and Saturday. And you can see those temperatures remaining in the mid 30s throughout the last couple of days of March before a bit of reprieve finally into the first week of April, where those temperatures then begin to finally cool down. Hopefully the temperatures cool down a little bit earlier than that, but you can see in terms of uh, temperatures, it is going to be a scorcher across the southwest of Western Australia. Unseasonably warm, that's for sure. And even though we are still technically in uh, early autumn and the temperatures can still be up around the high 30s and early 40s at this time of the year, it is rather unusual to see a heat wave of this magnitude into the southwest corner of Western Australia at this time of the year. And considering it has been a little bit cooler over the last couple of weeks, we're certainly not ready for it, that's for sure. Other interesting nuggets around Australia, there really is an awful lot of them you can see over the next couple of days. Cool, calm and collected conditions across South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. A few showers expected here and there into the east of Victoria and across the west coast of Tasmania. In terms of showers and th storms, are po uh, they are possible across the northern areas of New South Wales, especially throughout the remainder of uh, this weekend through Sunday night and especially through Monday and Tuesday as well. And we, we will revisit that in a future forecast update. But a few good showers and thunderstorms expected here and there across the southeast of Bris uh, Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales as well. But nothing concerning in the way of flooding or significant rainfall accumulations there. And on that note, that is all that I have time for today. A special thank you to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not run this show without them. Their support is much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, tuning in, subscribing, and leaving, leaving a like on the video as well. The support, again, has been much appreciated. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.